Good morning, my name is Mr. Farrell. I'll be teaching Physics C this year. Um, can't wait to get to see you guys in person, but until it's safe to go back into the water, I mean the classroom, uh, we're going to be um, just doing this through, through virtual learning or through videos, and then hopefully with Zoom, we can do, do many discussions. Um, but yes, there are a lot of sharks in the water, I guess COVID-19, and so hopefully uh, we'll get the sharks uh, out of there with a the vaccine and see you in six weeks. Today we're going to talk about our first lesson. We're going to talk about one-dimensional motion. And then as we discuss some of this, these topics, the math will, will, will jump out at us and we'll have like sharks, we'll have to kind of kind of look at look at the math and then incorporate the math, uh, some of it calculus, into our discussion. So um, we're going to look at one-dimensional motion. You guys have seen uh, seen this. Uh, we've got a ramp. Okay, we have a car, and we release it. Okay, down the ramp. We've all seen that. we got to define some things. So at the start of the ramp, it's called what? Okay, that's called the origin. And so we're going to plot that on a position time graph. And we're going to look at that on the board. Uh, we're going to draw that. So we'll draw a vertical line and we'll label that position. Okay. And then uh, it'll be in meters, right? And then we'll do the horizontal line will be time. It'll be in seconds. So we'll say position versus time. And then down here, zero, zero is the origin. Now the origin is where we start, uh, and we're going to start our car at the origin. So we start the car at the origin, like here, and we release it. Okay, so um, if you can't see this, so I'm going to tip this down a little bit low like that. So uh, you can see as it's rolling down, it's changing position. Um, now how do I record the air, the the velocity, let's say I want to know how fast it's going in a certain region. Well, what I can do is I can put this at a certain position. Now, I'm going to put this at 30 centimeters or 0.3 meters, okay? That's 0.3 meters from the origin. Now, how do I represent that on my graph? Well, I go back to the graph. Can you see that? Okay, I go back to the graph and I go down here. Uh, on the y-axis, which is the uh, represents the position, and I'll go up to uh, let's say 0 0.3. This will be 0 0.2, 0 0.1. This is meters, and so this is representing the position there. If I want to find the time that it takes to get there, I have to measure that. So I have a little timer here. I do have a timer. Okay, you can see my timer. And I'm going to uh, put, um, put one photogate at zero, okay? And the other photogate I'm going to put at that position, which we said was three, or 0 0.3, 30 centimeters or 0.3 meters. And then I'm going to release it, and I'm going to measure I'm going to measure that um, that interval. And when I do that, I get a time. Okay. I get a time of 0.56, or we can say yeah, 0.56 seconds, or 0 0.6 seconds if we round. Um, uh, so we have um, that time, one, we'll each say these are 0 0.2, so 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and so around 0 0.6 we have a point, and we'll call this Q. Okay, so point Q uh, occurred at 0 0.6 seconds. And how do we represent that? Well, the position is a vector. And so what we'll do is go from the origin, 2.6, and we'll make it a nice big arrow. The arrow represents the direction. Stem represents the distance, which is 0.3. And that's my first vector is from the origin to Q, and that's 
that's uh, that's that that representing that position. Well, what if I have a second position? I do have a second position, and I want that second position is at 60. So um, I go up to 0 0.4, 0 0.6 meters. I want to know where that second position is on my graph. So what I need to do is I need to repeat this experiment. I go from zero, and I'm going to reset it to zero, and I'm going to run it again. Okay, and I run it, and it's 0.92 seconds. That's what it says. So you probably can't read it, but it says 0.92 seconds. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to uh, find the 0.6 seconds here. I'm going to go down to 0.92 seconds here, and I'm going to find that new point, and I'm going to put that right here. All right, now then we'll call, call that another point. We'll call that zero. Okay, and then because we have another point, we've got to draw an arrow from here to here. I'll move down my Q. All right. All right. Well, and so there's another position vector. And so I have two position vectors, and I have two times. And if I want to find the displacement between those, uh, all I do is I take the distance at zero and take the distance from the position vector Q, and I'm going to do that, and that's going to be 0.9 minus 0.6 is going to give me, and then these are meters, and that's going to be 0.3 meters. So the displacement from uh, that car, from the, that the, the from Q to zero, uh, is 0 0.3. Now that's also a vector, and we're going to call that um, vector displacement Q zero. So the displacement from Q to zero is three meters. Now. What can I else, can I, can I, do I know uh, the speed of that? Well, I can find something called the average velocity. The average velocity from Q to zero is going to be this change in X divided by the change in time. And that's going to be the average velocity. Okay, so the average velocity, the change of x over the change in time, okay, for that is going to be uh, equal then to the change in x, which is 0.3 meters, divided by the time interval, and the time interval is going to be, um, we went from uh, 0.9 to 0.6, which is also about 0.3 seconds, so it will be about one meters per second. Okay, so that is going to tell me the average velocity between those two. Now the question, and I think you guys have done the average velocity, now, and the question if I plotted that over a period of time, what I would get is I would, what I would get is a quadratic function, and you've seen you've seen that. Uh, if I plotted the uh, time uh, and position from zero to six, I would get a quadratic function, and I'd see that it's not it's not linear. Okay? It's not linear at all. Okay? So the question is, how do I find how do I find somewhere between uh, let's say 0.3 and 0.6. Let's say I want to find the instant, let's say I want to find the velocity or the instantaneous velocity at 0.5 meters. I want to find the velocity at that instant in time. Well, I don't have any time interval, so I have to devise a way to do that, okay? And to do that, if you take a look at 
and I can find I can find the average between zero, uh, six, and three. Okay, but I can't find the instantaneous velocity unless I do something different. Unless I take the find the limit, and what that means, I'm going to find the limit. Okay, as that time goes to zero. So we're going to, in our next lecture, we're going to introduce a lab that will help us explore the definition of what a limit is. And, and, what, and so when we find that limit of when that time interval goes to zero, then we can find the instantaneous velocity at the point between 0.3 meters and 0.6 meters. And that's what we are going to be doing next is a little inquiry lab to try to determine that. Okay, so um, I'm not going to just give you the information, in, in, information and let it go. We're going to explore that in a little lab and then I will introduce the limit again. All right. Uh, I will talk to you in our next lecture.